Hi everyone, welcome back to Bayonetta on Non-Stop Infinite Climax. Uh, my performance on the last chapter wasn't great at all, but I did platinum it right after I was done with the video. It's just that it takes so much longer to do that compared to just playing the level normally. Well, while watching the cutscenes. If I don't watch the cutscenes, well, it still takes longer to platinum the chapter, but it would take even longer if I was doing it uh, on the first go. Oh, someone wanted uh, me to show them the... Kilgore Druga glitch. I'm hoping to show it uh, in this video, as well as perhaps uh, how a few other weapons uh, function. This is a this is a short chapter though, so I'm not sure if I'll have the time to experiment on that end. The next chapter is a boss fight, and the chapter after that is a gimmick chapter. So, yeah, I, I, I hopefully I'll be able to show that uh, glitch in this chapter. Just a reminder though that. Um, this is the Wii U version. I'm not positive if they actually fixed uh, the glitch on this. And I should probably stop trying to mess up on things here because uh, these are an excellent, excellent example of me showing how uh, the Druga works. Not, not, not the Druga glitch. Because since these enemies are on fire, if I attack them normally, I'm actually going to get uh, damaged. So that's not a good thing. So first things first, you want all your uh, equipment on you to be fire, and that allows you to attack these enemies. So I guess this is a good time to, to show uh, this weapon. Come on, attack me. The Ardors really like to attack you on at their own pace. It really bothers them. Anyway, the cool thing about the, 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 the Drugas here, or the Kilgore, I'm not sure what they are, is that you can charge them to create some kind of uh, small explosion thing that stays in the air until the enemy runs into it. Very cool. And deals lots of damage, of course. Push your attacks are still the same, in case you're wondering. And that's pretty much it for this verse, unfortunately. Hopefully I'll be fi fighting non-fire affinities very soon. So that I can probably show the Kilgore glitch. And here it clearly wants you to use a Beast Within to actually get through that door. There's also something right here that I missed on my first playthrough. A Broken Witch Heart. Either that or a Moon Pearl. I'm pretty sure it's a Broken Witch Heart though. You'll be seeing Broken Witch Hearts much more often than uh, the uh, Moon Pearls. Anyway. Go back here, activate this, go all the way here, but I just need to check something. Okay, false alarm. I thought it was a nap time that appeared uh, back uh, over there. Not, not at all. That's not the one I'm thinking of. Okay, so uh, there's only one, there's, there's this little collectible called the uh, Umber and Tears of Blood. The first 50 are bewitchments, or achievements, really, that you do while playing the game. The only one I'm missing is Legendary Dark Witch, which is to complete all the chapters on non-stop infinite climax, so we're going to be getting that once they're done. There's also the Crows, and there's only one in the Gates of Paradise, which is the chapter we're playing right now. There's uh, six more after this one. I've been told that the Crow in this chapter is right around here. Somewhere around here. I'm not positive I'm going to be able to find it, but I'm going to search around a bit because I want to get it. My initial attempt. I might have to do the battle here first to get it, though. And it might be on the left side as well. Well, I suppose I can search for it after I'm done with the verse. However, there's this other thing right here that a lot of players are going to miss on the first playthrough. This chest contains... An LP, which is part of a new weapon that you can unlock. Basically, it's a, it's a CD that you give to Rodan, who plays it, and, well, that attracts some demons, which he turns into a weapon for you to use. The weapon is Odette, which is actually, I, I might as well show it right now. This thing. The skates. They're kind of cool, but not very... They're, like, they're cool to move around with. They make actually Bayonetta to move a bit faster than normal, but not as fast as Beast Within. 
but they're not very effective as weapons. If you hit enemies with it enough, you'll eventually freeze them with uh, like higher level combos. And you can throw the enemies around to damage them even more using that. But they're not that effective compared to the Kilgore. So although they're fun, you probably won't be using them very often. Except to unlock the Bewitchment that uh, involves freezing 20 enemies with them. Ah, there's the crow. You, you see it all over there? That's the crow I was speaking of. I thought it was all the way out in that corner. Anyway, I can get it like this. Yep. Statue is in terrible shape. Restoring it will be easy. Just have to fight two of these things. And actually, these guys are perfect for me to show the Kilgore glitch. I'm not positive if you need to have uh, the... Your the Durga on the lightning mode here to make it work, but it was something that was recommended to me. Anyway, first you need an enemy on the ground, like here. Attack four times with the Durga, and as soon as you start the kicks, switch back to the the Kilgore, which is uh, the rockets. If you do that, you'll do this combo right here. Except Bayonetta. Will fire. Wow, I've never seen the, this guy do this sort of attack. You, Vayaneta will fire like 12 rockets, if not more, directly at the enemy. And that not only jacks up your combo meter, it also uh, deals extreme amounts of damage against the enemies. So, definitely a very fun thing to do. And unfortunately, I won't be able to show the Kilgore glitch again because I'm beating up this enemy. Definitely. He's dead. Time for climax. And unfortunately, it's the same an animation as before. A bit boring. Well, I think this is the last time we see this, fortunately. I really don't like this finisher. It's really boring to look at. Statues restored, which will allow us to walk on those weird water geysers. So you activate it, and you can walk on these things. The, the water effects are really cool right here, actually. Um, I'm not sure if it's possible to go all the way over here without using Witch Time. I've tried it several times, I've never really managed to do it. Okay, these guys. They're boring. Uh, the reason why it's the Kilgore glitch is because uh, it doesn't really... Like, anytime you switch uh, styles like this, it usually resets your combo. In this case, it doesn't, which is why it's called a bug, I think. That and the fact that it deals so much damage. And I didn't want to activate this cutscene right there, but... Apparently, I had to. Also, there's this thing right here. You're gonna be seeing this a couple more times while playing the game. Okay, I'm trying to do this here. One, two, three, four, kick! And you switch to the rockets. See? It didn't really jack up my combo meter right there. The, the Kilgore glitch is gonna be often used against bosses, and I'll probably be showing it when we fight the boss in the next chapter. But you'll see it very often for people who want to get high scores in the chapter. It's one of the easiest ways to do that. Although, to be honest, using the Kilgore in general is one of the easiest ways to do that. Which is why I use it in general myself. These don't really kill you instantly. In fact, they don't deal that much damage at all, but uh, you don't want to get hit by them. It's kind of embarrassing. And of course, we have to fight some enemies right here. This will be the last time I'll show the Kil Kilgore glitch, because, really. Well, maybe not the last time, because uh, there's one enemy I want to do it against particularly. Got to be careful of the enemies right here, by the way. They're very aggressive. Come on. Torture attack. Affinities are always fun to fight, to be honest. But you don't want to fool around the big ones. You really don't. 
And I actually used one of the Raven Form's uh, special moves right there. If you press the punch or kick button while in Quirrell Form, you'll get some fetters out and you press the button again to shoot them. But it, all, it costs one magic uh, ball, which is not very much in fact, to be honest, but it's something to consider. There's actually an accessory that is solely dedicated to always giving you, well not giving you, but regenerating you at the very least two balls. Only two, two gauges segments. So if you're gonna use the Raven Form's uh, special moves like this very often, you should look into equipping that accessory. Because it pretty much means you can always do it without having to charge up your meter again. Anyway, I'm going back here because obviously there's enough time. I think this, I think it's the only one of this chapter. So you know what? I'm gonna do this one. What is it? Oh goodness, this is the worst type of halftime, as far as I'm concerned. I absolutely hate having to do torture attacks. And against these enemies, no less. Well, I suppose it doesn't matter, but you know, still. Uh, anyway, I don't want to have the uh, this thing uh, uh, equipped, so I think I'm gonna put on this. Hmm. Don't think that's a good idea. It'd probably be better if I equip this, to be honest. But I'll put this on. So now enemies are gonna be much more aggressive because that. Wait, what? One torture attack? Uh, this is weird. I didn't even notice it only asked me to do one torture attack. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna fail this because uh, if it's gonna be only one torture attack, that's gonna that's a piece of cake. But normally they ask you to do like eight torture attacks, and that's just frustrating. Oh wow. Okay, okay. Yeah, sometimes these enemies do not care. They do not care at all that you try to. Uh, attack them while they were gonna get angry so I'm gonna fail this once again because uh, if it's gonna be this easy to complete the objective I might as well platinum it this so I only want to get hit once at most well time to do the kill, kill gore glitch actually it's very effective against these enemies the kill gore glitch And that's not going to kill this guy, but it's going to be effective. Considering the amount of time I have, this might be the only fight I have to do at all. Come on, come on, I'm done. Yeah, okay. I'm assuming this is the only fight I have to do at all to beat these guys. And remember! You have to you have to do is use a torture attack to defeat these guys. If you don't defeat an enemy while using the torture attack, it doesn't count. All the what which, which is what makes it, these types of half times to me so annoying. If you use the torture attack on the wrong enemy, you might have wasted your attempt. Anyway, yeah, that was surprisingly easy. I I back when I was trying chapter five, there were in fact surpri a surprising amount of half times that were surprisingly easy. So. It's worth considering that just half times are a bit junky, janky, sorry, in terms of difficulty. Even when you're like when you're playing normal, it might be actually the most difficult type of half time that you're doing, in my opinion, anyway. All right, back here. You have to move side by side a bit, and then ah yeah, this is the part. One, two, three, four, Kilgore. It's much more effective if you're in front of their face, but you definitely want to use the kill gore glitch against these guys because they are annoying. And now I have to re-equip Evil Harvest Rosary because I forgot to do that. And that's not what I wanted to do. Well, just an example of how much damage these guys cause. But yeah, if you're going to go for Platinum on a chapter, you'll be doing this very, very often. Going back to the title screen and loading the game. Because it starts you back at the before the, the verse started. It's something that people will be doing very often when they want to plan them a chapter. Because every time they make a small mistake, well, no biggie. You can just reload like here and it's back before the chapter started. Yeah. 
Yeah, just use torture attacks against these guys. They deal way too much damage. They're, like, some of their attacks don't deal much damage at all, like the lightning attack, but just a direct hit from these guys causes almost 25% of my max health right now. Also, use rockets against them if you can. Very effective. Most of the time they wait for you to attack them, by the way. It's over. And I'm probably not gonna get a platinum score for defeating them, though. Oh, the verse is not over. <laughs> I guess I have to fight these guys right over here before it finalizes itself. Yeah. Probably should have hurried up again. Okay, I'm not moving forward right now because I don't want to. There we go. Yeah, as soon as you try to defeat one of these guys, or you move uh, forward a bit too much, the bridge explodes, and the game obviously wants you to use Beast Within to go all the way to the other side. Trying to jump get the gap while remain in human form seems a bit dangerous. I don't know if it's a instant death, or just you get a bit of damage if you fall into the thing. If you move backwards over here, you get to fight more of these guys. As if the game is telling you, no, you're not supposed to go over here. Yeah, just using the Kilgore in general is a very effective thing. Oh, actually, you want to you want to use these guys' weapons. It's really good. Ah, gold medal. I took too much damage against uh, those uh, gracious and glorious. What are you boys doing in here? Are you hiding something from me? Come on. to regret this. Savior, but I suppose I can make an exception and kill all of you. Just this once, of course. Okay, so I for I completely forgot, but uh, one of the quirks about this chapter is that it, it introduces the aspect of uh, the fact that you have to protect something. It's not really difficult at all, though, because what you're protecting is uh, has a lot of uh, like it regenerates HP. Anyway, the reason why I like this weapon is because it allows you to deal lots of damage from a distance. Even if you don't want to. <laughs> you just have to press the strong button and uh, you can fire arrows that just... You can pretty much defeat a Gracious just by using that weapon. Anyway, actually I can probably show another weapon of doing this. Because these enemies are quite... Well, actually it's not a very good area for this, but I'll show it anyway. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Shh. 
what is this weapon? Kulshadra. That, that's what it's called. What you can do with this weapon is jump in the air and catch an enemy, jump off of it, catch another enemy, jump, and continuously do that. You have an achievement or a bewitchment that you can do with that weapon. Generally, what you want to do is go all the way high up in the air, fall back down, and then deal some damage. That's pretty much why this weapon exists. I swear I blocked that attack, but I guess I did not. Once you defeat this enemy right here, it's pretty much over. You want know to, to, to get a good score in this fight, you really have to get 9.9 .9 on your combo meter. Was I just singing? Mommy! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow down, little one. I am not your mother. But, Mommy... Will you quit calling me Mommy? <laughs> oh. <laughs> if there's two things I hate in this world, it's cockroaches and crying babies. Well, a crying baby cockroach would be truly terrible. So don't you dare cry. Yes, Mommy. Fine. You've got to be a strong little one to survive in a place like this. What's your name, anyway? Ceresa. Ceresa? You're not from Figrid, are you, little one? Where are you from? Uh, I'm from my house. Well, now, I'll hazard a guess this isn't your home. So what on earth are you doing here? My daddy told me to come here. And whereabouts is this daddy of yours? He was at work, but now I don't know where he's gone. I want to go home. <sighs> I can't just drag you along wherever I go, little one. So you better not be getting attached to me. Yes, mommy. Oh. Come now, little one. I'll help you out of here. But that's all. No. And you have to promise there'll be no crying. A single tear and you'll be crying alone. Got it? Okay, mommy. Oh. Yeah, escort mission in this game in cool platinum metal. Uh, Cereza is pretty much invincible because her shield uh, regenerates over time. So it doesn't even matter if she gets hit, to be honest. Like, you'd have to pretty much try to get her, like, defeated. It, 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 that being said, there are th this quirk of uh, having to defend someone with a regenerating shield. It happens in half times, and in half times, the shield doesn't regenerate. Here's an annoying part. For people who play this game initially, you have to, you can't attack these enemies as you normally would. You have to use this signpost to actually hit them. Because of how uh, Purgatorio and Paradiso and all the differences work in this game. And if you dodge, you drop your weapon. So you want to parry in this part. Anyway, blow this thing open. I want Cereza to be fairly close to me. And all of a sudden. This guy behind me. He wants Cereza. Fortunately, he's pretty slow at breaking the shield, so... Uh, but he... Compared to uh, <laughs> normal modes, he actually... Uh, like, he, he gets... He doesn't stay idle very, very long, and he catches up really, really quickly. So you have to keep throwing stuff at him or hitting him with... Uh, debris that falls from above there to keep him from catching up to Cereza because he really wants to catch her for some reason. I'm not even sure how that works. That's why he got stuck. Get stuck again. You cannot outrun Cereza by the way. In a, in a, in a weird way. Like you can't go ahead to uh, defeat the thing 
to, to, to bring down the gate like this one. Cereza has to be close enough for you to get there. Anyway, not a very difficult part at all, really. Pure platinum. I have been naughty. Can't really do much here. I don't even have, like, there's not even a urban umbrant tier of blood for me to find, but if you were in normal mode, you would have. I guess there's the gates of hell here. You don't, you, you don't have to let Cereza catch up to you at all to go all the way over here, by the way. Because she'll catch up when the cut, once the cutscene starts. In fact, she's ahead of you. <laughs> hey! Oh, this is probably how you got lost to begin with. Don't worry, it's always scary the first time you see them. So, where was I? Oh, yes. Your kind invitation. I do hope you've prepared dessert as well. What a lovely tea party. And dancing, too. Cereza, my dear, watch and learn. Oh my god, this is so dumb. Especially considering who uh, Cereza really is in relation to Bayonetta. Like, so ridiculous. I don't know what the writers were thinking writing this story. Or these characters at the very least. Didn't mean to get hit right there, but mistakes happen. Okay, one, two, three, four, and then I messed up again because it's actually a bit difficult to do this glitch unless the, both of these guys are stunned. Uh, I'm doing so terribly right now. Probably gonna screw up my uh, platinum ranking. And that, well, that's what happens when you don't uh, dodge the scream of the fire one. Of course, it's hard to dodge the scream when you don't see it to begin with. Yeah, it's hard to fight these guys, as I currently am, because besides the environment, they don't get stunned very easily. But at the, uh, at the very least, it's a good example of a... Uh, you can see that uh, Cereza never, didn't really take any damage at all, period. Anyway, can finally get rid of this one. And the other one used the teleporter. He's all the way over there. Come on. Yeah, okay, so I guess I didn't use the environment to my advantage here. If you get close to him while he's uh, like this, he's gonna basically just stop fooling around. Anyway, that was an extreme extremely poor performance for this first. I'm not even sure if I should restart. I probably should restart this verse. Because... I'm not going to get a good score on it. At all. Now I have to fight this thing. You can uh, parry these fireballs, by the way. Much cooler to do it that way. You cannot damage the giant beloved over there, though. Okay, so Cereza got it herself caught, but as it turns out, it just means that you don't have to escort her at all, or protect her at all, even. She's, she's pretty much out of the equation from this chapter now. So feel free to attack this guy however you want. This guy has actually got his own set of attacks, so... 
feel free to fight him however you want, but be careful of uh, his different sets of attacks. I'm using the Kilgore Glitch against him because I'm addicted to using it right now. He's a lot tougher if you don't use the glitch. A lot tougher. Well, maybe not a lot tougher, but he puts up a much better fight. He's even got his own attacks that involve summoning those, summoning those meteors from before. And this is strange. How did Bayonetta catch Syriza while still having her clothes on? Or hair clothes on? Because when she summons a demon, that's not she's not supposed to have them on. Also, that's kind of funny, the first time you watch this. And what's my ranking? Ah, gold. Could be worse. Could be much worse. Anyway, yeah, that's a fake out. It's not bayonet at all. It's an angel. Okay, you have to catch up to the uh, would-be kidnapper of Cereza here. If you're not quick enough, you will, in fact, uh, get a game over. So don't fool around. You're obviously expected to use Beast Within to catch up. Oh my goodness. I didn't mean to get hit twice right there. Fortunately, the fight against this thing isn't tough at all. This is going to be an extremely over-the-top cutscene, by the way. Sexually over-the-top. No one cares, ladies. Okay, be careful. Because uh, I am very low on health right now. You cannot perform torture attacks against this thing right now. It is a Bayonetta clone, though, so she can. She attacks as fast as you do. Yeah. She really wanted to give us a fir good first impression. Oh uh, jeez. Oh my goodness, did she seriously just split herself right at the beginning? I suppose that's something they really like to do. Anyway, I'm really tempted to use a Nidem right now. Because one more hit and uh, I have to use a red hotshot, which will prevent me... So it will guarantee to prevent me from getting a platinum rank. Come on. Yeah, okay, good. I didn't I didn't want to finish it this way. I wanted to finish it with a torture attack, but I did perform a torture attack at the very least cuz after that over the top cutscene, how can you not finish it with an, that over the top torture attack? Like come on. Uh there's pretty much nothing else except this Umbran chest right here that you want to check out maybe. Well, actually I think there's also a number in tier of blood raven somewhere around here or here. Not positive. Also, it was weird how it was day as we left the thing, but then all of a sudden turned to uh, how cloudy. It makes sense that it's cloudy, though. Mommy, you're a mom? You? Come now, Cheshire. Look at me. Do I look like I have any interest in children? Now making them? Well, that's another story. 
Whoa, whoa! You're getting the wrong idea. I mean, it might be the right idea, but not right now, right? Right? Yeah, uh, speaking of right, I'm glad I've been standing around waiting for you, because I knew we'd cross paths. See, the only way to reach the upper crust in their gated island of champagne wishes and caviar dreams is over Prominence Bridge. Oh, yes. The island. Lovely place, isn't it? Oh, now what? Don't play games with me. You've worked your magic on this poor defenseless child, haven't you? You're a sad, sick woman, you know that? I was her age when you killed my father. Wait. No. You couldn't. Oh my god, you did, didn't you? You killed her parents! Hmm. Come to think of it, she's better off with you. You two are more hassle than you're worth. What? Just keep a good eye on her, or you're going to catch hell for it. No good deed goes unpunished, and you never know when a monster may sneak up on you. Mummy, look out! Ah, uh, cool, Platinum. That means I don't have to play this chapter after, after I'm done right here. Huh. So, yeah, this was a short chapter, but it still had the 40-minute 40, 40 recording time because... Cutscenes! They're so long. And some of them are really boring and terrible to look at because... The stop motion doesn't work for everything, especially the what's supposed to be high action. Just doesn't work. Anyway, I'm gonna try to at least get the Blue Witch Heart again this time. Cool, I can get both the blue witch heart and the uh, gold moon pearl. This and this. And I'm definitely playing the boss battle right after this recording, so we'll see those two things in effect next time. Yeah, it's a boss battle against Temperantia that we saw uh, in the last chapter. And he was technically in this chapter too, but just indirectly. Check the playlist for more. Hope you've all enjoyed this video and hope you all have a very nice day. Bye-bye. Oh, and uh, I'll be showing more of the uh, variety of weapons that we have uh, in later chapters.